Okay, so the first entity I said it would be uh, purchases. And let's just uh, dig in. So here, the purchase ID, I'm going to say uh, PID, it's an int. Okay, keep it as an int. Uh, the second field would be, let me check actually the fields, name, uh, let's say title, number of number, user ID, purchase date. Let's do that. I'm going to say name of P name, Sabarcha, uh, customer ID, customer ID, it's an int. Purch, purch, let's say purchase date. Mm, I may use date, but I'm going to use uh, Bacha to avoid the uh, syntactical issues. Is date okay? I'm going to say state and date. State and that's it. State the date actually it's repeated here. State I'm going to say what child state actually means has been sold or not. Var uh, yes, uh, I'll stop here. I believe any uh, any description. Yes, Vacha also. Vacha, great. That's it. I'm going to update the database. Great. So, uh, second entity uh, users, your know, customers, users. Right click, add a new item. I'm going to use the same value we used in the first uh, refresh, the first tables, the first table, actually the name here we have to change, show table definition, missing table definition, I'm going to refresh again. Okay. I'm going to use the customer ID, the same the same word for the customer ID in the second table. Right click, new table. Customer ID is an int. C name. I'm going to say Vacha, Vacha 50, it's okay. What else? The username, password. The name it's a Varcha also. Password. The Varcha also. Okay, username, password, one word each. And that's it, it's enough. So I'm gonna update. I have an issue here. Uh, update cannot proceed due to validation errors. Please correct the following errors and try again. It has already a table, table. Yeah, okay, exactly. Because the name of the table here, we have to change the name to customers here. The name is customers. Customers. That's it, customers. And just update. Yes. Done. Here, actually, we have this. Uh, I'm going to refresh. I'll close this uh, customer's table, I'll keep this table here, and I'm going to change it to purchases. Purchases. This is it. I'm going to update. Update the database. Yes, so I have three tables now, I would have three tables. I'm going to delete the table table. Here, I'm going to delete this one. Yes, so I have only customers and purchases now. Customers and purchases. Third entity, purchases, uh, uh, visits. That's it, that's it for now, because these actually the visits. We do not need it. I'm going to generate, but we not use. I'm going to generate it, the visits. So, uh, VID, 
BID it's uh, named. Date. Visit date. It's, I'm going to use Varchat to avoid the syntactical errors. Status. To say actually finished or not. Varchat also. That's it. It's enough. I'm going to update. In the name first. Visits. Visits. Okay. Update. Great. So has been, has been terminated. I have three entities now. Let me refresh. Yes, three entities. We do have three entities so far. Great, we did it. I'll populate each with the one, two, three records. No more, no less. Show table data. The first one, customers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Customer ID. I'm gonna say one. Name. I'm gonna say Murat. User name. I'm gonna say Murat. Password. I'm gonna say one, two, three. One, two, three. Second, I'm going to say, um, yes, Muna, Muna, the same word, uh, three to one, three to one, for example, whatever, any, 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 any user. Okay, saved. There is no, there is no save button. I just click the next line, it gets saved automatically. So close. I'm going to pass to the next uh, entity. Table data purchases. Purchase ID is the one. Purchase name I'm going to say uh, vegetables. Vegetables. Custom ID is one. Purchase date I'm going to say today's date 16th, 5th, 21. Status yes, done. The description yes, finished. Nothing. Okay, second purchase I'm going to say two. Um, I'm going to say here. Um, House, house, stuff, house, stuff, for example. Customer ID number two, date, let's say 10, 5, 21, something like that. Uh, also done, finished. Great, next line, yes, yeah, saved. It has been saved. I want to close now. I close. Next entity, Pro table data. Okay, visit ID is the number one. Uh, visit date, I'm going to say today's day, 16th, 5, 21. State is done. But next line, visit two, it's on the 10th, 21, and also it's done. Done, saved. I want to close. Okay, I populated the three, I created the three and I populated the, all of them. Now I'm going to start by generating or creating the login interface very quickly. So I have the three uh, populated entities. I'm going to pass to create the entity at uh, the uh, login interface. Right click on the root folder, add new item, Visual C sharp, and it is web form. Yes, here it is. Just uh, I'm going to nothing. Do nothing here. Just just press add. Okay, uh, the default here, I'm going to rename it to login. Login.aspx. Great, it has been appeared here with a star. I'm going to save it. I'll move to the design view. Yes, and in here, in here, I'm going to insert the login components, which are mainly our uh, username, password fields. We may insert the picture later on, but for now, I'm going to just inspect the basic components, and later on, we'll see what we can do. So. First of all, the uh, toolbox, sorry, label, in front of which, front of which, text box. So, for the label, I'm going to say username, and that's it. Okay, next line, another label. And a text box again. Okay, for the label, I'm going to say password. Oh, 
Okay, password, done. Okay. Great, so later on, a button to confirm, a button to confirm, to submit. Here I'm gonna say, login, change the text. Okay, login. In front of this login, a label to clarify whether the username and password are correct or not. Yes, here it is, this label here. I'll leave it like that, but later on I'm gonna use it to display whether the username and password, they are correct or not. Okay, before I do anything, actually I'm gonna select this div where those components are, and I'm gonna center them. Format, justify, send, so done. That's the way. So, uh, I may do other modifications if I need, but no, I'll stop at this level. I'll stop at this level because the colors and the thing I, I keep you uh, through the properties. You can change all what you can, what, all what you want from the, from the font. You can do all what you need here. The font color or the background color, all you can do uh, here. Whatever. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to waste uh, the time in, uh, in designing. You'll do the, the the design from your side. Okay, here, here, the username and password, they would be actually read from the customer's table. This is the username and this is the password. We're going to read those two values. If they are valid, the, the customer will be uh, sent to the next page. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, no. So simply, simply, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to say, first of all, this page. And I want to create the page which is to hold, which is to hold. Before I create the, the main page the whole, to hold the uh, purchases, I'm going to create the registration page. So the username and password from where to get them, from where to get those values, from the registration, which is, this is the page, registration. I'm going to create the registration page. So on the root folder here, right click. Add new item. It's a form also still in C sharp only. I'm gonna just press add and rename it to registration. Okay, great. Done. I'm gonna save it. Center. Great. So I'm gonna do the same process, but here to insert those those fields here. The, the uh, name, the, the username, the password. Those three fields here. So here, label. In front of which, Xbox. Then, username, here actually I'm gonna say name, the label. Next line, it's another label, in front of which text box, and this label is username, third line and last, label, and text box. The label here is passport. Great. So then a button to register or to save. I'm going to say register. And also a label in front to confirm whether the registration has happened or an error has happened. This label here to display whether the registration is happened or not. The same scenario, I'm going to highlight the div and center them all. 
All the other activities are let you do it by yourself. Usually save the, the, the resource. Okay, let's continue now. Okay, and now since we have the registration and we do have the login, let's generate the main interface. Actually, once the login is successful, there will be a main interface, which is the purchases, which is where to see the purchases made by every client here, which is this page here. To see the uh, custom, where to build the custom query here, where we can see the the uh, purchases for uh, for every each single client. Let's do that. Right click, add new uh, page, add new item. Come on. Web form still C sharp only, no modifications, and I'm gonna rename it. Here it is the default. I'm gonna rename it. Purchases. Wait. Can I save it? Yes, happened. Design view. Okay, I move here. Here, simply, 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 what I'm gonna do. What I'm going to do, again, a little bit of space. I'm going to do something very simple here. Before I do, actually, I'm going to start by, I'm going to start by the, uh, the, the simple way. Later on, I'm going to show you the complex way. For now, for now, I'm going to display all the purchases. That's it, simply. So here, design view, sorry, the server explorer. This is the purchases table. I'm going to drag and drop. Whatever I want, just drag and drop. Simple. That's it. And they give him the capability that the database has given to us. All those uh, in, uh, those functionalities, amongst of them, to edit and to delete records. Save. Okay, done. I'm gonna display this page. View this view in browser. Yes, everything is there. Let me give the title to this page. I'm going to give here, uh, let's say I'm going to give it a label. I'm going to write it in a label to center it later. Purchases made by customers. Okay, I'm going to format it, justify it. I'm going to here I'm gonna format it. Yes, justify it. Center. Come on. Yes, justify center. And I'm gonna change the color here if I want. What color I may I may change it to something different. For example, yes, I may change the size also. I'm gonna say 32 pixels, that's great. Okay, it's enough. Okay, I'm gonna say, that's great. If I test again, yes, we have everything, okay, whatever, and we have the two records we have in this table. What we are going to do to exactly answer the question request here is that we would Come on, let me find it first, yes, here it is. We would display those purchases, yes, vegetables or whatever, made by whom? Made by whom? The customer is ID one. Hey, what is the customer name? What is the, what is the customer details? So we will build a custom query here to display all the details, not only the customer ID, because the customer ID is a foreign key here. We're not going to use this foreign key, we're going to use the details of the customer himself from the table customers. Let's do so. Come back here. 
I'm going to leave this one to compare later on. I want to generate a new query. I'll leave this one here. I'll leave this one here. I will now delete it to compare it later on with the new one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the same table again. I'm going to drag the same table again, which is the purchases. No, 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 no. I, I double click it now. I'm going to drag and drop. I said, yes, here it is. Yeah, I'm going to enable all the functionalities again. There is no worries. This is the .NET. Okay. At the same time, I'm going to just configure the data source. I'm going to configure the data source. So configure the data source, the same path. Okay, the same table. Yes, but here I'm going to use specify the custom SQL statement to, to do. I'm not going to use this table only. Next, here the same query. Yes, but query builder. Query builder here. The tables I need in plural tables, purchases and right click, right click, a uh, table, you, uh, customers also. So double click it and close. Now we have two tables. So we have two tables. So let me maximize this view here. Yes. So we have two tables. Custom ID with custom ID automatically set. Why? Because the same name. If you remember the beginning when we generated this, uh, those two entities, we generated with the same name. So automatically we had a relationship. Great. So here, so here we have those fields, but I'm going to include them. So I'm going to include tick. All of the fields we need, the three of them, I need them. Custom ID I do not need. Why? Because we already have them. We have we already have the custom ID, so no need to repeat it. Okay. I'm gonna just execute the query and see what happens here. Yes, it has been executed. Hold on, here, are, here are the data. If you can see purchases, and we see yes, C name here, the customer name and the details of the users. Okay. The password, we might not include it, but I'll keep it now. I'll keep it for now. I'm going to say, okay. Next. See the query. We'll see the fields. Yes, the fields has come. Oh, I have come in plural. Okay, I'm finished. I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm finishing the thing. Okay. Refresh. Actually, he said to refresh. What to refresh? To refresh the fields. Because see here, the fields available here, they are not the same. He is asking me to refresh the architecture of this entity. I'm going to say yes. Yes, it has been changed. And again, I'm going to tick. I'm going to tick the services, the functionalities of the .NET to ensure that everything is fine. I'm going to save this page. Test. See the difference between the first and the second. The first, we have only the ID of the user. The second one, we have the ID and the details of the user. All the details of the user. At this level only, at this level only, because we are displaying, because we are displaying the details of the user regarding the purchases, we do not need to display his password. How to hide this field? Let's do that. I'm going to come back to this same uh, same field only here. Customize. There is no need to customize. Just here, a split view. Split view. The password here itself. I'm going to search for the control for the tag of the password, which is here is the, here is the password. I'm going to take it off. Is the one is the password here? I'm going to take it from the ASP here from the split. Take it off, save, just run. Visualize again. There is no password. There is no password. There is no password. It has been it has been vanished. It has been hidden, uh, hidden, no more, no less. So perfect. Our work is perfect. This page here won't be displayed to us unless the user has typed the correct password. Means the start is not this page. This is the final st st page. The, the, this page won't appear unless the user types the correct username and password. How? 
he has to type a username here password here if they are valid after he presses the login he would be moved to this purchases page okay let's start with redirecting the user with a simple username and password just uh, like that actually double click on the button redirecting the user without the username and password without control so i'm going to say response dot redirect response dot redirect to destination in between quotation <clears throat> to this page here i have to specify the same name of the page so here in between those parentheses two double quotations and here paste the name of the page like it is ispx.aspx the same name the same spelling otherwise to give us an error i'm going to save everything i'm going to test the login no username or password so straightforward yes here it is come back we are in the login page login yes now let's make the control the username and password have to be correct otherwise no otherwise an error so i'm going to double click again on this uh, password but what happens if the username and password are wrong so the label here has to display a message wrong message here before this response before the response be sure that you do it before the response if but what is the name of this text box? Text box one. What is the name of this text box? Text box two. Okay. Text box one for the username. Text box two for the password. If text box one, but text equal equal, let's say Murad and say and and, and commercial and. Uh, text box two dot text equal equal let's say one two three one two three okay i'm gonna start here close here i'll drag and drop this query okay else else i'm gonna say label which label this label which is label 3 label 3 now else label 3 content of this label 3 will be having this message let's say Eranos credentials let's say something like that semicolon okay great Eranos credentials okay let's save let's test the page now let's visualize i'm going to type uh, admin also uh, let's say um, admin again okay login Elonus credentials Elonus credentials great i'm going to type now the same username and password the same one murad and 1313 so here, Murad, one, two, three, one, two, three. Login, we are in the purchases page. Perfect. We are perfectly in the right destination. What I want to bring in your attention to is that this is a static login. We are not reading the username and password from the database. We are not reading the, the, the database usernames and passwords what does it mean what does it mean it means that the username here and the password here they have to be read from here from this customer table here this is the username and this is the password those fields to do so, so here we are not going to make a test username password equal. No, 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 no. It will be actually something completely different. We have the solution already in our 
in our uh, in our guide but i'm going to explain it to you we have it already here it is we have the solution already here but i'm going to explain it to you one by one step by step okay so i'm going to keep this one here intact and before of it before this if here i'm going to do all the necessary to read the username and password from the database so first of all i'm going to generate the sql connection sql connection which is not visible to me. SQL connection is not visible. Let's see, there is nothing. From the options here, there is nothing SQL connection. And it's underlined with red. Means it's not available in my library list. So I'm gonna call it using here the system data, the first library. And the second library is the SQL client using system dot Come on, use it. System dot data dot SQL client. Yes, that's it. I finished. I come back. Yes, now it is under. I see it's in green. Connection. I'm gonna say name con. See on. Connection. For example, equal. Uh, let's say new SQL connection. It appeared. In between double, in between parentheses, quotations, what? What? The path to the database. This is the database. Right click, properties, and here is the connection string. The connection string. So I'm going to copy this connection string. Double click to highlight it, copy it, paste it here. And that's it. So here we are done. The quotation available inside inside the string, I'm going to delete this quotation and this quotation. Okay. Still, still we have those bars. They are underlined. See, underlined here, underlined here, underlined here. All of them, they are underlined. Why? Because those are escaping characters. I'm going to avoid this error by putting before this quotation, before this quotation, an at, arabas. That's it, to avoid those escaping characters. Now I'm done with the SQL connection. The SQL connection now it is to be utilized to specify the path of the database. Where is the, uh, where is the database? No more nodes. So, so, now we pass to the next step, which is the query to read the username and password from the database. To do so, I'm going to pass by to create another query, which is the SQL data adapter. SQL data adapter. That's the one. I'm going to say SDA, SQL data adapter. It's a variable name. Use a user defined name, not, not to write a long name, SDA. Equal new SQL. Let me find it. SQL data adapter. Yes. And if it's between double quotation, what? Double quotation here to bring the query. What is the query? Is to read the content of this table here. Select, select, star from the table name. What is the table name? Customers. Customers. The same spelling. C capital from customers. But we are not going to read everything. We are going to read only the data where the username here equal to the field here which is text box one and the password equal to here the text box two only otherwise no to do so after these customers where close where what field name username the same spelling the name equals here I'm going to say double quotation plus plus in between the name of the text box text box one but text yes and what the password the same spelling password 
equal double quotation plus plus Xbox two. What text? Perfect. We call it at the end. But here, so we call it at the end. I have to specify the connection to which I'm gonna connect. I'm gonna connect here. This is. I'm gonna pass this query. That's it. We are done. Uh, done. So I'm gonna save. So here, the SQL adapter. It has the query plus plus the connection at the end. C at the end semicolon. The name of the connection. What is this name? It is the one we specified here. It's the same. It's, this is the name. The connection name. We wrote earlier. No more, no less. So here, this way we are able to. Uh, yes, specify the path of the database and we pass the query to the database. Now let's read we class uh, we have. The query passed to the server. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read. So what does mean I'm gonna read means I'm gonna actually see the uh, the, the data we retrieved. So here data table. The table, yes. I'm gonna say bt user defined user defined name. Data table is say new uh, data table. Yes, semicolon semicolon here. And this data table I'm gonna use, but to fill. No, 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 no. I'm gonna use it to fill this SDA. So the SDA I'm gonna use it to fill it using the SDA dot fill. Yes, here it is, exactly. The DT, the data table. That's mean we're going to read the content of this select in a table form. So the content here, we fill it inside this table table form. No more or less. So actually, we are just uh, reading the content of the of the query, the select query, which we passed through the uh, SQL data adapter. No more, no less. Now we are going to test if there is if, if, if everything is fine or not, no more, no less. What does it mean? So, we said that we're going to extract everything from this jadwal. If the username is equal to the, to the text box and the path is equal to the text box. Okay, how to test now? To test, we're going to see the table content if it is not null or not, because if it's null means it's not matching. There is no match. The, the, the username is not matching, and the password is not matching also. Means nothing. What does mean nothing? Means I'm gonna build another if. I'm gonna build another if here. Uh, if to use it to do what? Actually, to test this data table. Actually, which we. We uh, we generated this data this DT dot row rows at position is it to the position zero jadwal, uh, the line is zero line is zero and the index the column which field which field we have field zero number zero number one number two the username is number two the uh, number zero is the first. Number one is the second, number two is the third, number two is this username, so two here. Two, sorry, two I said, two. Not equal, let's say null. Yeah. That's it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this if, I'm gonna delete this if. I'll, I'll test only the, the username here. Let's test both, even the password also, and and the same the same thing. Dt dot rows position line zero field which field username is two. Right after the password would be three zero one two three three. So position three. Not equal, not equal, null, nothing, means nothing, it's not empty. Wait. If yes, 
will be display uh, passed to these purchases purchases otherwise no let's save now let's say okay I'm gonna test this login now we have an error semicolon is expected did I miss yes semicolon I missed here I add it. Let's test now. Great. So I'm going to type admin. I'm going to type the same username I passed off earlier. Murad. The password is 123123. One, okay. Login. I have an error. SDA.field. It's not. It's not. It's not working. Uh, invalid colon name Murad. Invalid colon name Murad, he said. It's not available at all call a name right it's not available so I'm gonna actually it has to give different error it's not the error I was expecting but even though even though let me just type now a correct username and password what does it mean let me check the usernames we have or table data I have Marat and the password, it is, it is true, Murad, 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 and the uh, password is one, two, three, one, two, three. It's the same. So it has to give me the result. Murad. One, two, three, one, two, three. We have already one field like that. No, it have an error. Let's see what is the error to, to understand. Uh, invalid calling name, Murad. Uh, okay, in my SQL query, let me close, let me check it in the SQL side. Invalid on a name right he said. Yes, so it is perfectly correct, but I'm gonna just change this one to be to a string. Yes, that's it. And also this one I'm gonna change it to a string. There is nothing. Doubt. Okay, actually we are about to see the result now. Okay, Murad again. Some password one two three one two three. But is it the same error? Yes, column name is not invalid column name Murad. Uh, invalid column name Murad. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, to string. Yes, valid. I'm going to do something, uh, I'm going to do it differently to avoid the uh, the issues we are, uh, we are seeing. I'm going to just do it differently. So I'll come back here. I'm going to just count if we have values in this, uh, in this uh, count the number of the records. If there is a match, use the name and password. So we'll have actually at least one. Otherwise, no, so the rows. Here, actually, what we are going to uh, to to say is not too much the value. We are going to see the number of rows. So here, I'm going to say equal equal one. There is one, at least. And here also, equal. So equal equal also one. Otherwise, we will check. Okay, it it is uh, underline. String that the string, so I have to put them between those quotations. That's the quotations, okay. Why one? Because here, if the username and password are correct, we'll find only one record one line so okay we test by one mm. 
let's check the same rat one two three one two three let's log in I'm doubting about this error actually everything is fine I'm pretty sure everything is fine we have it already in our solution I'll copy paste that zero two I'm going to check on the this is the username. Save test because we don't need actually if it's uh, correct, so the password is correct for sure. No, still, so there is another problem, it's not the point here. There is another issue that I have to fix. We reached the end, actually, we reached the end, just I'm gonna check what is the issue. So, uh, the solution I'm giving it to you, so it's, yeah, zero, zero, why, because Okay, let's change this uh, number here because it seems to be column field, column field. Okay. Same database resources. Yeah, okay, I'll stop at this level, I'll stop at this level. Uh, I'll give you the chance to check it in your computer because I'm not trusting my database, I have my uh, Visual Studio with the database I have. Uh, so I will expect to see the result from you and if you get the same message or not. That's something recording first of all and after I'll, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. In order not to give you a long uh, rec recording. 